month when setting up the award budget, start planning early. Be aware of policies and procedures. One of the biggest things is document, document, document. Welcome to Understanding Financial Management of ATE Awards, a six-part video series designed to assist new grantees in the fiscal setup and implementation of their NSF ATE Award. In this video, grantees are made aware of the responsibilities, requirements, and compliance issues around subaward agreements and the use of consultants. I think the biggest thing that grantees are not aware of is that you should really understand who you are doing business with. Are they financially stable to actually administer the grant? Do they have enough staff to actually control and handle the obligations of the award? Have they been debarred, suspended? If they had any audit findings, did they correct those findings? So once you sign that subaward agreement, you are now legally bound and now you're responsible for that subawardee. So all the flow down provisions that NSF requires on you as the a prime awardee, you as the prime awardee have to do the same for the subawards. At any given point, if it's not working, that's fine. You can talk to your program officer and you can definitely end the agreement. And also, when you're doing your subaward agreements, make sure you spell everything out. Are there milestones attached? the rate of performance, the period of performance. What happens if they do not perform well? Will they be some kind of termination clause? All of these things are very important when you're dealing with a subawardee. Basically, a subrecipient is a non-federal entity that's going to receive federal funding through the awarding agency. They will have to follow the same guidelines that's outlined in the OMB Uniform Guidance. Um, one thing that needs to be done is periodic monitoring of those subrecipients to ensure that they're doing what they need to be doing as far as the OMB guidance. One lesson that we've learned is to keep up to date with the OMB guidance to ensure that you're doing exactly what the OMB guidance and the federal federal government wants you to do when you receive the federal funds. So what we have in place with respect to subawardees is that we developed a process that has very strong integrity um, in the way we deal or expand federal dollars. And so we require that any subawardee to any federal grant that Northland is a primary of must follow the same procedures and policies that we have in place in executing their grant activity. And what that does for us is it provides a uniform process, uh, both at the primary level, in this case Northland, and at the subawardee as well. And so the two are one and the same. What are NSF's primary concerns around the use of consultants? With consultants, grantees should have an agreement in place. They need to name the consultant. They need to say what the consultant is actually going to do. What did the grantee want the consultant to actually do? There needs to be a period of performance. There needs to be uh, any kind of um, any additional information that would make sure that it's a binding agreement. Our project external evaluators directly charge to our side watch grant. A consultant form is filled out in the beginning of any job, of any type of service that's being done and sent to our procurement office that has to follow their own policies and procedures of the college, as well as policies and procedures outlined in the Office of Management Budgets um, Uniform Guidance. Once that has been established, our evaluator can do work. Um, once they do work and the invoice is sent, then payment can be made based on if the principal investigator is um, approved of that said service. In the beginning, I wasn't sure how to pay our project evaluator, our external evaluator. So working um, with NSF as well as our accountant at uh, the college, uh, we put it in the budget category, uh, G3, other direct costs, consultant services. So it was very easy to match the invoice that was sent by our external evaluator. So the, the dollar for dollar match. So it was very easy, very clear. What were some of the factors that contributed to an easy setup and implementation process? What made it easy was a signed contract by our president 
uh, that happened uh, in the interim period between when we received notification of our grant, which was April, and then we actually got our money on August 1st. So in that interim period, we signed an agreement. So when it came time to disperse those funds, there was no issue about what vendor is going to be paid for this. We issue a contract to all our consultants who do any program evaluation. And so we generate the contract and spell out all those expectations and requirements. And then we figure out what amount of time that potentially could take to get that done. They either agree or they don't. So when they sign it and send it back, it is executed and then we set it rolling. We make sure in the end we are getting the deliverables as outlined in the contract before any payment is made.